This video is sponsored by quadcopters.co.uk, the UK's largest multi-router specialist. Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Nighthawk Pro 280 quadcopter, which is an ARTF version. ARTF standing for almost ready to fly. So let's see what we get inside the box. First of all, we have our comprehensive instruction manual. Our first bag contains our USB cable, screws and camera mounts. The second bag contains our propellers and cables for the receiver. The last thing in the box is our almost ready to fly Nighthawk Pro. One of the first things you'll probably notice is the lack of flight controller. That's because it's in the bottom plate here along with the integrated ESCs. The motors also come on 10% angled motor mounts. It also comes with an integrated selectable 5.8 video transmitter. You can choose power output from 20 to 200 milliwatts. The video channels are also selectable from 1 to 32. The Nighthawk Pro also comes with an integrated LED bar. This is extremely bright. All the cabling on the Nighthawk comes pre-braided which is really nice. On the bottom you can see the integrated USB, flight control board and integrated ESCs. These ESCs are one shot compatible. On the other side you have your inputs for your receiver. The bottom plate has a liquid covering to stop any shorting out, for example on some wet grass. It also comes with an integrated 700 TV line FPV camera. When you take it out of the box for the first time, ensure that the lens is tightly screwed on and also focused right. Here's a close up of the all in one board. This board contains your flight controller and your four one shot enabled ESCs. It also contains switches for turning on your video transmitter and LEDs. The motors that are included are the Emacs MT2204 2300KV. Inside the bags that I pulled out at the start you will find an antenna mount, a vibration isolator for your Mobius camera, an angled camera mount for those high speed moments, a cloverleaf antenna, you may notice that this is left hand polarised. The fitting is SMA, the same as Fat Shark and Immersion. Also included is the USB cable for updating and programming. Some spare screws should you lose any. An Emacs battery strap and some extra shielding. Some clockwise and counterclockwise 6045 propellers. And finally the cables used to connect to your receiver. So let's get on with the setup. Open Google Chrome and search for base flight. As you can see the top selection is the one you want to use. Click on this. If you haven't downloaded Base Flight, you can click on the top right hand side here and download it. As you can see I already have it on my system so I can just click it and launch it. At this time it's probably worth putting on the antenna onto the video transmitter just to avoid any mistakes later on. If you powered up your machine without the antenna and the switch was on then you will blow your video transmitter. To save mistakes later just screw this on now. As I mentioned earlier this is a left hand polarised antenna so you will want a left hand polarised on your receiver. If you haven't got a left hand polarised, I suggest swapping it over for a standard right hand polarised. Standard immersion antennas will go straight on no problem. Should you now power up the quad, you can do so without worry of blowing the video transmitter. Before we go to the setup, I'll just show you how to turn it on and off. So you can see these two switches here. The left hand side will turn on the LED light bar. As you can see, this is extremely bright. The right hand side will power up your video transmitter. To change power from 20 to 200 milliwatts, you can just pull this switch here. For my build, I'm going to use this FR Sky TFRSB receiver. This will bind straight to my Futaba TA FG Super. I'm going to use this bunch of cables from the cable bag. The connector will go through the frame here and into the bottom board. Starting with the cable that has the power, ground, and signal, plug that into channel 1. Then with the rest of the cables going left to right, plug that into channels 2, 3, 4, 5. When you're done, it should look just like this. The cables coming out left to right will go into your receiver 1 to 5. So let's continue with the computer setup. Using the provided cable, plug one end into the Nighthawk Pro and the other into your computer. You will not need to power up the quad for this section. Once plugged in, base flight will recognize the board and you should get this on your screen. As you move the quad around, you will see this represented on the screen. The first thing we're going to need to do is calibrate the accelerometer. Make sure that the quad is sat on a level table, then press calibrate accelerometer. You will see in the writing above that the calibration has finished. 
Now we need to calibrate the mag. Click Calibrate Magnometer. We now got 30 seconds to calibrate this in all of its axis. So pick up the quadcopter and as you will see I'm going to turn it over on its side 360 degrees. So it goes right the way round. Then I'm going to turn it all the way around 360 degrees on the spot. Now I'm going to hold the quad up and spin it around 360 degrees. If you copy what you see being done here your mag will be set perfect. It is a little bit hard to do because you will have a cable connected to the PC and to your quad but you'll get there. After 30 seconds on the top left hand side you will see that the calibration has now finished. If you now pick up the quad and tilt it backwards forwards left and right you can check that everything's working correctly. Now let's go to the configuration. A lot of this setup will depend on your personal preferences but this is how I set mine up. The minimum throttle I tend to set at 1050. If you decide to fly this on a 4 cell then setting your minimum throttle at this point is very important. My middle throttle I set at 1520 this is because I'm using a Futaba. Most other radios will need to be set at 1500. The failsafe is ok at 1200. On the right hand side you will see a bunch of options. You can see you can actually select these tick boxes. Out of the box the Nighthawk Pro does not come with the one shot enabled so you will need to click this box to enable it. Once you've done that you would then go down to the bottom right hand side and select save. If you look up to the top left you see that the flight control board then reboots and starts again. The next tab is the PIDs. The Nighthawk comes out the box with the tuning already done for you but I would suggest turning up the rates on the roll and the pitch. On the stock settings it takes about 70 feet to do a roll or a flip so this is why I bring these up. Once I've done that go to save. Again on the top left you will see it reboot and start again. Now it's up to the receiver setup. This is going to be the first time that you power up the quadcopter whilst connected to the computer. It's extremely important that you do not have the propellers attached during this time. If your radio is compatible with many quadcopters then set up a new profile from fresh on your radio and name it the Nighthawk Pro. Now with everything powered up if you move the sticks around you will see the corresponding channels on the screen move around. If you remember earlier we set our minimum throttle at 1050 and our maximum at 2000. So we need to set each one of these channels endpoints from 1000 to 2000. Also depending on what radio you are using you may need to change the channel map. Change the channel map and then press save. All we have to do now is make sure that our channels are operating correctly so if I put the throttle up then the throttle goes up. If I put the throttle up and it goes down then I'll need to reverse that channel. It's the same for pitch, roll and yaw also. If you find one going the wrong way just reverse the channel in your radio. Now it's time to set up the endpoints for each one of these channels. If I push roll to the right you can see it doesn't reach 2000. If I do it to the left it still doesn't reach 1000. Our values need to be between 1000 and 2000. To correct this go into your radio setup. Go onto the endpoints. Here you can see I'm going to do a roll to the left. We're just above 1100 so if I start changing the endpoint and bring it down to 1000 that is now set right. If I now then push it to the right hand side I need to set the endpoint for there so I'll bring that up to 2000. It doesn't matter if you don't get it perfectly on 2000, just around it will do. Carry on the same process for the pitch, yaw, throttle and aux 1. Simply adjust the end point of each channel from 1000 to 2000. As you can see here I've adjusted all of my channels now to go from 1000 to 2000. The middle resting point is somewhere around 1520. Now let's set up our flight mode switch. This is channel 5 on our radio. As I move the channel 5 switch you will see it moving the different bars from low to medium and high. I usually set mine up like this. The top mode I usually have as angle, this is stabilised mode. The central mode I'll set up as horizon mode. This is a stabilised mode however if I give a full over stick movement it will do an automatic flip and then stabilise again. In the last position I have it in acro mode or rate mode or manual mode. People call it different things but basically the stabilisation is all down to you. That's your flight mode switch set up. Remember to go to the bottom right and click save. The last bit of this setup is to calibrate the ESCs. So click on motor testing. Down here you will see a check button. Before you check this make sure you remove all the propellers from your machine. 
never do this with the propellers connected. Click the check button, then raise the master right up. You will see that all the values are 2000. Now you will want to plug in your LiPo battery. You will hear a series of beeps. Once you've heard these beeps, pull the master all the way down. You'll then hear some more beeps. Once you've heard them, click the check button again. Now all it's left to do is attach the optional antenna mount and screw on your propellers. Remember to put the spacer in the props before putting them onto the motors. You will notice that the black nuts turn counterclockwise to actually tighten up. The silver nuts are more traditional and spin clockwise to tighten up. The Pro can take up to 2200 milliamp free cell lipos, as you can see here. If you're a beginner to mini quads, I would definitely suggest trying out the free cells before going to four cell. It will also give you a bit more flight time. Once you've gained a bit more experience with the Nighthawk Pro, you might want to angle your camera up so you can get a bit more forward speed. Fortunately, Emacs included the angled camera mount with this kit. No doubt the angled camera mount along with the angled motor mounts will help you with good forward speed. So that's it for this video guys. Stay tuned for a future video where we put this up against its more expensive cousin, the Immersion RC Vortex. Thanks for watching, I'll be back soon.